And Craig Breslow, for the first time this regular season, joins us on the Harbor One Hotline this morning. Hey, Craig, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Excellent. Are you on the road trip? I am, yes. Excellent. How is it out there? Uh, early. That's... But uh, so so far, going, uh, going pretty well. Um, off to a, a pretty good start, and hopefully we can keep it up. Yeah, I mean, a lot of talk so far uh, about – pitching coach Andrew Bailey and and pitch selection. In fact, Alex Cora uh, the other night went out of his way to say that the pitching staff has bought into this new concept, I think was the way he described it, which I'm, I'm guessing is essentially uh, throwing more off speed than, than fastballs. Is that something that, that you guys went into this? Uh, did, you, did you figure this out in spring training or did you go into it uh, beginning of the season that how, how did that come about? Sure. So I think, uh, you know, even conversations that preceded spring training, we recognized that uh, we wanted to build a pitching infrastructure off of leveraging our guys' strengths. Uh, and for almost the entirety of the, of the rotation in the bullpen, uh, that was secondary pitches, whether that was change-ups or, or sliders and, you know, historically, uh, the most damage in the game has been done on fastballs. So, you know, I think the obvious response to that is to throw fewer fastballs. And Andrew deserves a ton of credit uh, for kind of championing this idea and for building the relationships with the pitching group really, really early on uh, to, to get them willing to implement it and go out and execute on it. Were you personally or, or the organization concerned at all when Jordan Montgomery essentially said that he was not interested in coming here? Um, is that an issue for this team going forward? You know, uh, we, we have to worry about the things that we can control. Um, those are the, you know, the guys that we have here. Uh, we're doing everything that we can to try to get the most out of them. I think, you know, the initial results have, have been encouraging. Um, but, you know, it's, it's kind of not up to us to control, uh, you know, what, what others may or may not think. And, it's also unclear, you know, exactly how much truth there there may be to any of that. Um, but we're focused on the group that we have, and and we're excited about them. Craig, optioning Bernardino was a surprise to a lot of people. What went into that decision? Yeah, so you know, obviously, Bernie was a guy that contributed in a significant way last year. Um, you know, became a very very trusted left-handed reliever for for Alex, and uh, you know, coming into to spring training, our goal was. To, to take the guys that we felt like would best help us uh, win as many games as possible um, and also preserve as much depth as we could, knowing that it's going to take far more than the 26 guys that break on opening day uh, to, to carry us through the season. So uh, I am very, very confident that Bernie's going to help us win uh, a bunch of games. And you know, we had a good conversation with him on the way out. Um, he was obviously uh, disappointed and frustrated, but unbelievably respectful and professional. And he's working really, really hard uh, on some of the things that we had identified. And, and I'm confident he'll be back and he'll be able to help us. Craig, I know it's still early in the season, but based on where you guys are when it comes to your pitching, you're, you're at the top of the league in a lot of different categories. If you guys continue to, to stay this path, especially um, when it comes to your rotation, is your expectations that this team – should be a playoff team? Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we talked for the last uh, couple of weeks about how, you know, everyone was super excited about opening day and how, uh, you know, once we start playing meaningful games, games that matters in, in, in the standings, it doesn't matter what, you know, what the projections say, what we're supposed to be. It only matters what we go out and do. And it's really, really early right now. But I think uh, what we're seeing is, uh, you know, a starting staff that is keeping us in games. And, you know, now we're, we're six games in Bayo's thrown twice. Everyone else has been, you know, one turn through and it seems like uh, one guy has been better than next, whether that was, you know, Bayo on opening day or Pavetta's incredible performance, um, you know, despite the, the one run loss, uh, turning it over to Crawford and then Whitlock and Hauk. Um, so, you know, we, we believe in each other. The, the guys believe in, in each other, and they're holding each other accountable. Um, you know, I think we're seeing a really, really exciting brand of baseball being played and uh, one that should stick around. 
Craig, obviously yesterday, the sad news of the passing of the former president and CEO of the Red Sox, Larry Lucchino. Uh, curious about your interactions with him and uh, your when you were first here in, uh, in 07 and your thoughts on his uh, legacy. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, incredibly sad day and, and significant loss, not just for the Red Sox, but for Major League Baseball. Um, you know, I think Larry was a, a champion of an executive and the word that comes to mind, uh, I think when most people think or speak of, of Larry is the word visionary, um, someone who was able to, to see the game, not just for what it was, but what it could be. Uh, and you know, the impact that an organization and its stadium could have on a community. Uh, I had a, a strong personal relationship with, with Larry um, and we were able to talk about so many different things from the state of the game and contract negotiations to uh, an, uh, a clothing company that I had invested in. Uh, and, and so he will be sorely missed. Um, but I think his impact is felt in, in this organization pretty, pretty heavily. Curtis said, uh, earlier, arguably his his best move ever may have been bringing your guy Theo Epstein in. Sure, uh, you know you can look at the his fingerprints are are all over the front office and multiple front offices in the game. Um, you know, he had a great uh, eye for for talented executives. Um, you know, and and uh, I think there are so many people in the organization on the baseball ops side and on the business side uh, who credit Larry for giving them their start. Um, Craig, we've heard a lot of people uh, inside the organization talk about how Alex Cora was focusing on a culture change when it came to the clubhouse. When you took this job, were you told about what the culture was and that there needed to be a change? And if so, what, what is that change? Uh, so, you know, I'd gotten um, gotten appreciation for kind of what the culture had been, uh, and I think that comes from talking to coaches, talking to players, talking to people in the office. Uh, and there were a number of people who contributed in in a really positive way to to the culture here. Uh, but I think in talking to Alex, it became clear that he wanted to raise a level of competition uh, and candor and accountability. And those were all things that I believe in very, very strongly. So uh, we, we set out to, to do that from you know, very early on in, in my, uh, my days here. Uh, and I think we saw that in spring training, there was competition surrounding everything that we did, whether that was pitchers fielding practice or infield drills, uh, or golf. Um, and then, you know, that, that ideally carries into the season, uh, where we're competing for every pitch or every ground ball or fly ball, and, uh, and, and holding each other to, to the standard that we've come to expect in Boston. Did, 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 did Alex Cora just say Verdugo has to go? <laughs> <laughs> Alex has been uh, very respectful of the job that that I've got, uh, okay. and you know um, he recognizes. I'm just, that, I'm just reading between. That, I'm trying to read between the lines, Craig. That's what we do on this show. I yes. I, I hear it. He recognizes that I've got a difficult job, and I recognize that that he's got a difficult one. And uh, I actually would would highlight uh, last night's managing performance uh, should not get lost in, in this conversation. Um, you know, just the, the the creativity and imagination to to move guys around and optimize the matchups was, yeah. was pretty incredible. Craig, just speaking, since we're talking about Cora, everybody that you work for tells us that it's up to you whether or not there is a new deal with Alex Cora. What What is the timeline on that? And is that something that you will engage on in season regarding the future of Cora entering his final season or as currently managing his final season? Sure. So, you know, conversations, uh, you know, about, Alex's future w will take place between Alex and me. Uh, I don't think that, you know, it makes sense to, to speak to a specific timeline outside to say, you know, outside of, of saying that neither Alex nor I want this to be a distraction. I think we are both very, very capable of preventing it from becoming a distraction. Uh, and, you know, there are certain um, realities that that you know we can only face by living through a season that are really really important in establishing you know the the trust uh and 
accountability and transparency required for a really strong and lasting relationship. Uh, I'm very, very excited about the start that we've gotten off to. Um, but you know, that's that's what I'll say about the situation. And on the team, in terms of the roster, we've been told multiple times from either Sam or through Tom or John or whoever that the team isn't quite ready to be fully invested into. Is there a win total in mind that ownership has given you where you can reinvest either members of the farm to trade for known commodities? Is there a number of wins that this team has to have by the deadline for you to be in a position to add rather than subtract? Uh, you know, I don't know that it that it's a kind of hard number of wins. I think if we are, you know, if we're competitive and there's a realistic chance of, of a competitive run, um, you know, down the stretch and into the playoffs, then, uh, you know, I think that this ownership group has shown that they are willing to invest in the team uh, every year that that has been the case. Uh, and I anticipate that being the case again, uh, you know, I think, it becomes a, a baseball decision, you know, what is best for both the short and long-term outlook of the team. Um, and we won't know that until we, we gain more information by going out and playing games. But the one thing that we can do is go out and win as many games as possible. All right, Craig, thanks for taking the time. As a guy who was born in New Haven, Connecticut, you might be the best possible person when it comes to deciding a massive debate, which has been going on between Shime and Courtney. Uh, there is a university in Connecticut known currently for their hockey team. Uh, I need to, it starts with a Q. Uh, I need to know how you properly, as a Connecticut native, how you pronounce that. Uh, not the question that I thought I was going to get asked this morning, but uh, I believe that you are, you are talking about uh, Quinnipiac. Ah, Perfectly I think, said. I think yeah. you said it exactly as Courtney did. Thank yeah. you for setting Courtney, you have won. Thank that you. That is Craig Breslow, the ultimate source on this as yeah. a Connecticut guy. He's the decider. He is the decider. And Craig, thanks, and we'll talk to you again soon. Sounds great. Glad I was able to settle that. All right, there he is. That is Craig Breslow. Huh? Quinnipiac. Okay. Yep. There we go. All right. All right. Would you say he emphasized the P shine? Yep. I think it's the wrong em <laughs> emphasis, but uh, you know what? You win. <laughs> oh, so he's wrong also. Oh, you were very no, quiet I, while I just he said was on the wins. line. I just said she won. Okay. Okay. Very quiet. He is the, we decided he was the decider. So you should have told him to his face he was wrong. <laughs> you should have said it to him on the phone. I still think he is wrong. I still yeah. think you're wrong. But, again, I he think was you're the a decider, coward. so he wins. <laughs> How am I a coward? I just said you won. Did you call him a coward? Craig Breslow on the line says it, and Shine goes, "Okay, that's the that's the way, I guess." Well, you know, we that's the deciding we, we said he, he was the up, decider. Shine's like he's wrong. <laughs> Puffs out his chest. Yeah, I'm still. I still stand on uh, stand on my ten toes. 